I'm Lewis. This is Anna. Hello. We make up two thirds of the Skills for the Futures traineeship at Historic Environment Scotland. Our other colleague Neve sadly isn't here today. She's at a wedding. The just to give you a bit of background, the Skills for the Future traineeship is a one year heritage lottery funded traineeship to give us the skills and the experience to gain a jobs in the heritage sector in the future. And it is lots and lots of fun as you're about to find out. So luckily enough for us, in September we were able to undertake a community heritage uh, engagement project on the Isle of Egg. As you can see here, it's a, one of our aerial photos of Egg. This is a photo of the new harbour, which is down near the bottom, and the old, which is just above it. So just in case anyone doesn't realise, <laughs> Egg makes up part of the small isles just off the west coast, just south of Skye. Since 1997, the community has owned the island. They bought it out. Uh, it's run by the community trust with a very active uh, heritage <coughs> society also. The island is completely off-grid. It produces its own Wi-Fi, it produces its own electricity, and has won several awards for how it's tackling climate change. Um, so it seemed like it was probably, as it was so community-led um, and community-based um, already, it seemed a pretty good place to start with a community engagement project. Um, so we came up with this idea to do this in uh, the summer of this year. And um, as much as the project promised us an excellent opportunity as trainees for um, experience in the heritage sector and experience with small, small communities, we really wanted to learn from the islanders and make sure that the project was equally worthwhile for the people of Egg. We didn't want to just come in, um, do our stuff, and then leave again. Um, so in order to do that, we set out these three project aims um, that we hoped to achieve, which was to use the results of the former RCAM survey that was carried out about 10 years ago um, to present the found material back to the community, um, for us to experience a community engagement project and learn the skills necessary for it to be successful, and very importantly, to tailor information and uh, events that we did to the community wishes and the interests of the Egg uh, Heritage Society. Right, so to begin, we started off with visiting the pupils of Egg Primary, uh, of which there are only five. There's two five-year-olds, two seven-year-olds, and an 11-year-old. You can see everyone in the middle photo just there. Uh, our main aims of the day were to teach the kids uh, a little bit of their island's history and heritage uh, through various uh, fun interactive activities. So to start off we prepared a really large scale timeline which you can see right at the top in the middle there uh, with imagery ranging from Egg's prehistory to its present day history uh, which was sort of relating to like, the community buyout in 97. Uh, and they were able to decipher all of this imagery and stick it on the right phases of the timeline. Uh, they were able to learn about geological and historical phases of egg, as well as like legends and stories and folklore, and it was quite a lot of fun. Well, we had a great time anyway. Uh, to end, we kind of got them to try to add to the historical record, if you like, of their opinions and thoughts about egg. So we got them to draw their favourite places on the island and got them to stick it on the timeline and then the timeline was left at the primary school to show off all their hard work and I think the teachers were really pleased about that. And it also meant that they could add into the sort of historical record as it was were. Um, but then we had them, we had Mike and Adam who are our resident professional real life archaeologists uh, who came in um, to talk to them, bringing with them two uh, boxes of archaeological finds, a fantastic flint box and a Viking Britain box, which was kindly loaned to us by Archaeology Scotland. Um, and under the guidance of them, they were able to explore and learn about different uh, objects within these boxes, as well as have a chance to meet professional archaeologists and actually properly ask them their questions, rather than asking their teacher um, or somebody slightly less professional. Um, the archaeological activities continued into the afternoon, with Mike and Adam leading tours of these square cairn Pictish cemeteries, which is actually a very rare and really interesting, fascinating site to go to, um, and uh, of these Pictish cross slabs as well, which are in a Catholic church on the other side of Lag Beach. Um, the children were taught how to use survey drawings um, so they could identify areas of the site and they could learn how to spot archaeological features on the landscape and examine it, um, which really seemed to work really well because at the end of the day, um, one child, Clyde over here, was able to spot a prehistoric knocking stone all on his own and actually pointed out to the archaeologist himself. And even more excitingly, 
it was on the survey drawing, but it had been moved from the site where it, the spot where it was marked. So he was able to look at something on there and then refind it somewhere else. So that was really exciting to see them, you know, be able to pick up these skills so quickly. Um, and all in all, I think it was a really highly successful day, and everyone enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. The archaeologists enjoyed it. The teachers enjoyed it. The kids enjoyed it. Um, I think the kids were really interested and enthusiastic, and they they would really love more opportunities like this of people coming in to talk to them and taking them out. Um, I mean, that's what their feedback forms that their teacher brought over said, so maybe that wasn't quite, quite accurate, but I think you can see by this little girl's face how excited she was to hold a Viking object. It was really rewarding for us. Uh, through each activity we were doing, the kids started off being quite reserved and quite shy, and then they got more and more engaged. By the end of it, they were just running right around this field, so it was brilliant. So, moving on from the school visit, uh, the majority of our sort of like week-long visit really was planned along these archaeology walks. We wanted to stage several days of archaeological themed walks, which were going to be guided by Mike and Adam, our archaeologists. Uh, we were going to be visiting the sites of the former Arkham survey, um, obviously with the input from the Ex-Historical Society, uh, to revisit the sites and then explain what we found. So the trips were, well, first off, they were a fantastic opportunity for the islanders who were interested to learn about eggs history, to learn about how people might have lived, uh, what life might have been like, uh, and to just be able to ask questions with you know, archaeologists there, which doesn't happen very often. So over our week-long visit, we staged walks between uh, Kildonan Church and Bry. Five pennies to an area which is now called the Oracle, which was an absolute highlight. Uh, we visited some Neolithic houses. We went to the Massacre Cave, which is a pretty horrific site where uh, the majority of the island's population were massacred a few hundred years ago. Uh, and then we took an impromptu walk to the Gruelin Township, which was actually suggested by one of the islanders, which was great to get them to suggest stuff. Uh, and all in all, we covered about 57 kilometres over about six days. Uh, we were really pleased with the level of engagement these walks were able to achieve. Uh, with each passing day, more and more islanders were coming uh, through all age groups. They were suggesting places to visit, and they were really engaging in great discussions. Um, we didn't really know what to expect when we went over there in terms of engagement, how successful it would be, um, and particularly how successful it would be outside the sort of what the usual suspects, as it were, you know, the heritage society and the school, the academic um, interested parties, as it were. And we're really keen to try and get a multiple levels of engagement across the community, not just these people. Um, so in order to do that and reach the widest amount of audiences possible, we held a variety of formal and more informal evening events during our stay. Um, we hosted a cheese and wine evening, oops, which you can see at the bottom here. Which, which we dubbed Cheese and Wine and Back in Time. <laughs> evening featuring uh, presentations on egg folklore and prehistory, um, which caught the interest of many of the locals and actually lots of visitors as well t um, came. We were really, really impressed. We had about 25 to 30 people, which on an island of 100 is, you know, a fifth of the island. But that's pretty good. Um, and uh, it sparked loads of discussion, and we got loads and loads of um, feedback and excellent sort of um, conversations with people. And uh, we also hosted an evening in the local tea room, um, a really much more informal evening where we just basically went down and chatted to people. Um, and this gave us an opportunity to involve some of the locals who perhaps may not come to such a regimented historical society setting um, to chat to us and talk to us um, in a more, you know, informal setting. And we took our archaeology Scotland handling boxes as well, so we took fantastic flint down to have a wee look at. But what was really interesting about this is that once, when we did this in this formal thing, these guys really sort of, after, a bit like the kids, they were a bit reserved, but then after a while they warmed up and they wanted, and they, it was also a really good opportunity for them to show us their archaeological finds in return. So, you know, they had ship timbers and bait holes and rocks and this beautiful prehistoric axe that one of them brought out to show the archaeologists to get it, you know, sort of validated. So it was a really good chance for them as well, you know, to, to meet people and chat to people on a slightly less academic level. Um, and the relaxed atmosphere and the welcoming attitudes of the locals at both events, I think, made them really successful. And it's a great opportunity for those who are unable, also unable to join the archaeology walks because of work or because of um, ability and such, to meet and chat with people who knew what they were talking about. 
So to sort of begin rounding up uh, our talk, talking about our uh, thoughts about the project, uh, it really was successful as we've already said. Uh, the project delivered a diverse range of engagement across the whole community. We really did hit all age groups across the island, loads of interests. We also hit visitors as well as the islanders. So it really was fantastic. Uh, the trip also provided resources for future use, both with the islanders and Historic Environment Scotland. And we're hoping that it was a really great, it, well, it, it kind of like highlighted the potential and necessity for similar projects to be run like this in the future with small communities. Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. And I think, um, you know, we were very keen, as I said before, that it wasn't just a static visit, that we didn't just go in and then come away again, that something, you know, it was a continuing relationship and a continuing sharing of knowledge and transfusion of knowledge. And um, I think, looking back, these are some of our feedback we got from the islanders. I think it really was um, very, very successful. If we think back to our aims that we had, um, you know, I found the archaeology talks very interesting. The guiders' walks should continue as they connect us further to the landscape. Um, definitely very valuable. I came as a guest to the island, and I'm so glad I was here for the sharing. And, and talking about this continuing relationship, it was good to have another dig on egg, three round circles up behind the old shop. So, you know, there's a potential project for us to go back and do. Um, but I think, yeah, if you look at the outcome, uh, the aims and then the outcomes, I think they really did match up very well. And we're really, really pleased with the way that it went. And um, I think the project's success shows that there is a valuable and necessary place within the heritage sector for these kind of small community engagement work. Um, we're working at the minute towards collating all of our results and uh, to further our involvement with EGG and make some kind of hopefully multimedia resource that can go online and be used by anybody. Um, and perhaps looking to branch out into the other small isles as well. Um, but mainly we hope that this will create a long-standing positive relationship between HES and the people of Egg, and we actually we can't thank them enough for participating so enthusiastically and sharing a journey with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.